So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about me and a little bit about the Academy in the UK and a little bit more about the Academy in Australia. So I thought that I would tell you first and foremost that I'm actually a complete fraud because people think, because I founded an organisation called the Marketing Academy, that I am in fact a marketeer and I'm not. I'm a very frustrated ad man, I think. And I spent 25 years of my career, because I started at the age of 15, um, as a headhunter. So I'm actually a headhunter, and I uh, did that for a long, long time. And I found my purpose in life five or six years ago and created the Academy with that purpose. And I was really inspired by what Ronnie was saying. You really do need to find your purpose to make a difference. Have to be honest, headhunting doesn't make that much of a difference. I spent a long time in my career doing it because I was good at it, but it didn't make my heart beat faster. What it did do was enable me to speak to a lot of leaders in the UK, a lot of the C-suite, who were all sharing their frustration with the emerging generations coming up underneath them. So I would often be asked, you know, what's happening with the talent of today and why have I got no succession in place? And I thought, you know what, the headhunting industry shouldn't really exist. Because we're really only called in when a company's totally screwed up its succession planning. And so I'd rather be made redundant, I think, and enable younger people to be the best that they can be so that our C-suites don't have that succession issue. So what I did was I set up the Marketing Academy, which, as Sunita said, is a non-profit organisation in the UK. So it exists supported by the industry for the industry. And I will tell you a little bit more about it as we go on. Um, but I thought what I'd do first and foremost is just share with you some of the issues that were facing the leaders, marketing leaders and agency leaders in the UK, which kind of inspired me to set up the academy in the first place. Um, as I said, I'm fortunate that ha as a headhunter, I've spent a lot of time with a lot of CEOs. I was always attracted to the marketing searches, because obviously the marketers are really cool people, right? And, uh, and I'd gravitate towards them, and it really built in me quite a passion for what marketing can be and do when it's at its best. I'm passionate about leadership in all industries, in all sec sectors, but marketing specifically for me is the one function in a business that can dictate its growth and its success. It's the one function in the business that has the customer at the heart of everything it does. And to me, leadership is about influencing. It's about influencing people to be the best that they can possibly be. I can't think of a function that influences more than marketing. So marketing done at its best influences everybody to be the best they can be, to make the best decisions, to make choices that can change their lives. So for me, marketing should sit at the heart of the board story. And it's always frustrated me in the UK that there are so few CMOs in board roles in the UK. In our FTSE 100, there are only five five CMOs on the boards of the FTSE 100 in the UK it drives me nuts. One element of the programme that we run in the UK has CEOs talking to our delegates about their career journeys. So I went out to the market to try and find CEOs that had come up the marketing function. Hen's teeth. <laughs> there are a handful of CEOs in the UK that have come up through the marketing route. It's CEOs such as Terry Leahy of Tesco or Gavin Patterson at BT, Martin Glenn at United Biscuits, Carolyn McCall at EasyJet, and that's about it. Fortunately, they are involved in the academy, but I had a real hard job to try and find them. So CEOs in the UK, and I think it's replicated in other countries, tend to come up the finance route, but my belief is that the marketing skill set suits that role more than any other. I think marketeers at their best, fabulous inspirers, they're great storytellers, they know how to engage, they know how to nurture, they know how to influence, and they're passionate about what they do. They're passionate about getting their companies to make a difference and a sense of purpose. So I wanted to do something that would enable marketeers to get up that learning curve. And so I created the Academy, and it's gone from strength to strength over the years. But there are still, I think, some gaps with the emerging generations of leaders. So when I was a young, bright young thing, I was a rising star once, would never be called that ever again, clearly. But when I was younger and coming up through my career, 
it was a completely different environment, right? I used to sit next to the people that I learned the most from, physically sit next to them. I've got scholars on my program now that have never even met their, CA, their CMO. There's so much in the way of us nurturing and developing those new generations of talent. Technology is not a brilliant enabler for that, right? Email is the death knell, I think, for great leadership. You cannot tell somebody how fantastic you think they are. You can't appreciate someone holistically. You can't tell somebody how they make you think and feel. You can't tell somebody how valued they are on an email. You can't watch somebody doing something brilliant and praise them if you're working remotely. You can't tell somebody what a great job they've done if you've got a closed door policy or your office, the physical office environment doesn't support it. So there's a number of things in the way of developing our talent. When markets get tough, and in the UK, trust me, it just completely bombed in 2009. When markets get tough, training and development budget gets cut immediately. So you're asking people to be more, do more, be better, but you don't have the money or the budget or the time or the resource to invest in them. So things, when things are tight, it's really difficult to develop your, your talent. There are a few forums around that will enable knowledge to be shared across sectors. There's not a massive amount of collaboration that goes on between agencies and their clients and vice versa. And these are all barriers that can get in the way of, of developing that next generation of talent. And I also think that there's a disconnect, right? I think there's a disconnect between the young and emerging leaders and what they want and what we as the current generation leaders want from them. So we did a very quick survey recently of 120 very, very high potential gem wires. And these are the sorts of things that they were saying that they wanted from their employers. Number one, they want purpose. They want to be working for a business that has purpose. They want to feel valued and respected and appreciated. They want to make a difference. They want to get exposure to different cultures. They want to embrace diversity. They want learning from everywhere. They are hungry and thirsty for knowledge. They want to learn from exceptional leaders. Bottom line, they want to be inspired. So it's all me, 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 me. <laughs> they don't want much, this generation. But what we want from them is this. This reads, I think, like a 1970s Pepsi ad, right? These are just some of the things that we want from our emerging talent. Why do we want the world? We want them to learn it all. We want them to do it all. It's a fine balance, I think, with our emerging leaders between youngsters, that, youngsters, younger talent that needs the right processes in place, the right disciplines in place, the right skills in place. My view is that we need to ensure they've got the right beliefs and behaviours. So if you have somebody that's got the right belief, the right behavior, the right drivers, the right ambition, the right motivators, then actually the skill stuff, that's fairly easy to learn. And there is a myriad of fantastic learning, training, and development out there from a skill set perspective. So I thought, what were we going to do about that, really? So the qu kind of questions that I was thinking in my mind in setting up the academy was, well, how can we do it then? How can we create something that's going to inspire an entire generation of future leaders, this generation of people slightly underneath us, who one day will inherit the world and will drive the countries to perform at the best they can possibly be? How are we enabling them to be the best they can be? So how can we get best practice for them across industry sectors? How can we share the learning of the current generation of leaders with those people? And I was thinking, well, if not now, then when? And if not who? If not you, then who? And I decided that we were going to do something about it together. Because the bottom line is this. It is all about us. It is all about the current generation of leaders being the best leaders they can be. If you lead your people in the best way possible, the people that are coming up underneath you will absolutely thrive. So to get the best out of our people, we need to give them the best of us. And the mark of outstanding leadership, I believe, is not just how good a leader you are, but how many people you develop. It's all about giving. It's not about getting. It's all about purpose. It's all about giving back. 
And so what I started to do in the UK was to create some forums where there could be some collaboration across industry sectors, where we could bring agencies and client side together to learn more from each other. And I think that whilst a lot of investment is done internally, there's some great internal marketing academies in the UK and I know here too. There's so much more that can be done if we look at pooling the resources of the current generation of leaders together. And this is one of my most favourite quotes from a recent lecture uh, we had. So good leaders create followers and great leaders create more leaders. And there's a big difference between leadership and management. And when things get tough in the market, when we need results and we need them quickly, there's a temptation to switch into management rather than leadership. Because you can get fast results from management. Management is about driving people to do the job to the best of their ability. But it's about measuring them. It's about putting in a process that drives their performance. It's about pushing them and driving them. And it's a little bit about control. Leadership is about inspiring them to do it for themselves. And that's about freedom. And that's harder to do when things are tough. But as leaders, we kind of owe it to the people underneath us to lead them in the best way possible. So it really is all about freedom. I'm a real fan of quotes. <laughs> They're clearly not original enough to come up with one of my own. I'm using this one, which I think really does sum up and sums up everything that we stand for in the academy. So if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you are a leader. And anybody can be a leader. In your organisation, it's not just the people managers that can be fantastic and exceptional leaders. If you've got influence over anybody, anybody in life, then you are, in fact, a leader. So, um, Sunita asked me not to spruik. And I had to Google it. I thought it was something vaguely obscene, so I was very disappointed to find out it wasn't. Um, and so I am actually going to spend just a few minutes telling you what we do and how we do it and a bit more about the Australian programme. So in the, in the UK, the Marketing Academy is sponsored by a handful of really big brands. As I said, it's supported by the industry for the industry. And over the last five years, we've developed four programmes in the UK. Our flagship programme is called The Scholarship, and that programme is for the emerging leaders. Those of you in international companies, just ask your colleagues in London. They are likely to have heard of it. And we take 30 emerging leaders through a year of learning. We have a series of lectures called the Merlin Lectures. So when we get a really, really great speaker like Rory Sutherland or John Hegarty or somebody like that, we'll ask them to put on a lecture for us. The lectures are totally free. We've got to deal with the Odeon Cinema Group. So they're in the Odeon in the Covent Garden. And we've had 4,500 people through our lectures over the last four or five years. We've just launched a £1 million fund for apprenticeships. Um, I felt quite frustrated that... Um, to, to get a foot on the ladder of marketing or advertising in the UK, you kind of have to be white Anglo-Saxon middle class graduate with rich mum and dad who can get you an internship somewhere. And actually, there's a whole collection of young people aged 18 to 24 who don't fit that demographic. So we've launched a £1 million fund, pound fund to create 50 jobs or apprentice, apprenticeships in marketing and advertising to get that new generation a foot on the ladder. And then last year, in partnership with McKinsey, we created the fellowship program, which is exclusively for CMOs. And it's to get CMOs onto boards and seen as credible successors for CEOs. And we're taking a cohort of 15 CMOs through a year of learning with McKinsey, where they get mentored, but they get mentored by chairman and non-execs, bankers, accountants, and lawyers, etc. It's a really powerful program. We've already had our first two CEO appointments. We're about to announce the second year cohort. And this is all made possible by a handful of organizations and a lot of people. So we have a team of about 360 people in the UK, all gift their time. And these companies make it possible for us to deliver our programs totally free of charge. Finance is not a barrier to learning in the Marketing Academy. I'm a big believer that wisdom, knowledge, and experience shouldn't have to be paid for. It should be freely given and gratefully received. So all of our programs are free, so just thanks to these guys. Uh, this is just an idea of the type of people that come on our programs. I have to tell you that these are big brands, clearly, but we also have scholarship places available for emerging talent in smaller businesses. 
across agencies, uh, creative agencies, advertising agencies, integrated agencies, digital agencies, media agencies, and then all of the client side. So we have mixed cohorts of 30 go through our program. The 120 people I said I did that survey on, that's our alumni. So we've got 120 bright young things that have been through the program. We've had 16 board appointments from that alumni over the last four years. We've had 100% of them, with the exception of the last graduated cohort, um, have been promoted. 67% of them have been promoted more than twice. So we believe we're already starting to make a difference. Um, there is an alumni in the room somewhere. Where's Gemma? So just over there, so Gemma is at Woolworth, so that talent drain works both ways, so she, you pinched her from the UK, but if anybody wants to find out about the scholarship, go ask, go ask Gem. And this is the kind of things that they say, fortunately, about the Academy in the UK. Um, the scholars do think it's quite a mind-blowing experience. Um, and I'm just really, really proud, actually, that, um, that people say such amazing things about th this very, very small business. Our organisation runs with two employees, two full-time members of staff. Everything else that we do, we're able to do because it's all freely given. So this is the real spook. I'm loving that word and I'm going to take it back to the UK. Uh, so tomorrow we launch the Australian Leaders Programme here. So the website is open now. And what we have been doing over the last six months, with a lot of help from our friends, uh, is pulling together a cohort of mentors and coaches and judges and organisations that will support a totally free programme that will run for 30 emerging leaders over 15 days between February next year and October of next year. I have to thank our fabulous sponsors who came on board with something that was at that point just a really good idea. So these have had the faith in us that we would be able to launch this in the markets. So I have to thank News Corp and Combank and Google Australia and Foxtel for their support. I think they're demonstrating that they're really passionate about excellence in marketing and that they want to give back and that they want to develop talent. And to tell you a bit about the curriculum of what the emerging leaders will go through, it looks a bit like this. So their year will start in February with a five-day boot camp, as we call it. And that's where we bring the entire cohort together for five days. They do a two-day leadership development program in that time. And we will pack the boot camp with inspirational speakers. I aim to bring talent from all over the world to come and talk to them. So we'll be bringing in some best practice. We'll be taking a lot of expertise from the ground in Australia to share it with, our, with the delegates. They will meet up to eight mentors. So we have a team of mentors, both client side and agency side. Some of the mentors are in the room. So they might spend time with Victoria Short at Combank, or Ed Smith at Foxtel, or Matt at Lyon, or Inez at Telstra, or Steady at Group M, or Andy Ponting at Cleminger. It's a really great lineup of mentors. They will go for lunch and learns with the CEOs of the great Australian businesses. So by way of example, David Thode will be, ho will be hosting a lunch and learn. That's where the CEO will host a small cohort of our delegates in their boardroom and talk them through their journey. Each of the cohort will have an executive coach. That's a one-on-one -on -one relationship that goes right the way through the nine months. And they'll also be invited to six lectures. That'll be skill-based lectures. It'll be covering things like behavioral economics or creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and leadership. So over the nine-month period, they will have experienced 15 days of quite powerful input from the best in the industry. And this is how, if this works, how they get on. So, the nomination portal is open from right now, but don't all go on at once because it might crash. Um, and it's open to both brands and agencies. So, the criteria, the published criteria is that they need to have a minimum of eight years' experience. I felt it was quite important in Australia that we get the biggest ripple effect of the learning from these emerging leaders as possible. So, we would like for the delegates to already be in a leadership role or position of significant influence. But they can be both client side and agency side. They need to be fully employed um, and they need to be your best, the high potential talent, the ones that you think will succeed you in the future. 
they will go through a rigorous selection process. So whilst it's free, it's not easy to get a place. In the UK, we have between 600 and 700 nominations every year, and we only take 30, so it's quite competitive. They will be asked to provide a CV. They will be asked to provide an employer's endorsement, so a written endorsement from their employer. And they will be asked to provide a showcase me, an example of which I'll show you in a second. And then they'll go through a three-stage selection process, which will include a pitch, face-to-face -face pitch, and a 90-minute interview with a panel of judges. And uh, I'm going to leave you with one last thing, really. Um, and, that, and this is it's my personal view. Uh, it doesn't matter what you sell, what product you make, what service you provide. It is your people that are the most precious asset you have. And they have the most value. So this is one last quote. And again, it's not from me. But you need to light fires inside them, not under them. Nurture them, value them, invest in them. But treat your people with the respect that they deserve and the payback for you will be phenomenal. So thank you for listening.